This is Main Street, Rockford, Illinois. It could be the main street of your town, or mine. Once the terror of this river valley, Black Hawk. He stands on a high bluff south of town, a frowning figure in granite. But, you know, the folks in our town owe him something we can never repay. For it was Black Hawk that made us band together in self-defense back in 1832. Wheels of industry, powered by Rock River, cradled a community, a community welded together by an Indian on the warpath. We were taught to pull together and make this valley what it is today. We have a heritage here in Rockford, a tradition of living, planning, and working together. It's a typical American community, not unlike your own hometown. There's a hundred thousand of us, Swedes, Italians, Poles, you name them, we have them. But in this town, we call them all neighbors. Our main street reflects that civic feeling. You'll sense that of all the things we produce here, the biggest and best is democracy. It produced this city from a sawmill on this river, and take it from me, it goes right on producing things. From famous Rockford socks to flowing molten metal to feed the ever hungry machines. Farm equipment, plows and plowshares. Stove parts and lots. Complex machines to shining cans. Drills and draftsmen. Everything isn't work here though. Black Hawk Park with its inviting playgrounds and flowered walks. Yes, there's a time to play, a time to work, and a time to pray. We're proud of what our town makes, but prouder still of those institutions which make our town, our churches. They're strong because the people believe and are active. You know, it's the people, not the steeple, that makes a church. Or take that structure out on 15th Avenue. That's the training center for Company C, 4th Battalion, the Marine Corps Reserve. Once a week, 248 officers and men gather here. There are a lot of reasons why these men stand together. All of them are proud to be a part of an outfit like the United States Marine Corps. I guess there's no doubt of that. Everyone likes to feel that he's playing on the first team. One of the biggest reasons they have for joining the Marine Corps Reserve is the rich opportunity it offers for learning. Corporal Harry Rose is one of the best mechanics in town. Once a week, he puts on a new uniform and receives additional instruction and actual practice in his trade. Only one of many who are being trained without interference to their normal schooling or civilian jobs. Private First Class Lyle Walker is learning radio repair and getting paid for it. Communications. This man is increasing his skill, satisfying his self-respect. Bob Walker is a sergeant, a salesman in civilian life. Here, he welds a strong future by keeping something extra in reserve. Promising young executives keep their hands in Marine Corps affairs. Mr. Milligan, assistant manager of the telephone company by day, Captain Milligan, Marine Corps Reserve this evening. Yes, that's one way the Marine Corps serves the community. It helps supply the town with skilled technicians, young men capable of holding down important jobs. As Company C serves the community, so it serves the nation. Weekly classes such as these, important cogs of the Marine Corps. They're learning the full value of teamwork, the art of directing men swiftly, safely, to a given objective. They know the answers. Teamwork, self-discipline, these are essentials for our leaders of tomorrow. 
This outfit is a vital part of the Marine Corps amphibious machine. That's right, trained thousands of miles from either ocean. Tonight it's infantrymen in Rockford, taught to make beachheads right on the spot. Artillerymen in Arizona, engineers in Oregon, tank crews in California, amphibian tractor drivers in Alabama. Yes, the Marine reservists like to carry the mail for Uncle Sam. Matter of fact, carrying the mail is Sergeant Leland Roos' specialty. And just like all reservists, he's proud to belong to an outfit that everyone admires and respects. And he's proud of his Marine Corps reserve emblem and wears it. Let's stay with him for a while. That's as good a way as any to see our town. First stop is Bernhardt's Men's Store. And here our sergeant mailman finds Corporal Corbley outfitting himself in the latest thing in checks. Say, speaking of checks, do you know that the members of the Organized Reserve Marine Corps receive from $150 to $350 a year, depending on their rank? Most organized reservists spend or invest their government pay right here, another way in which Company C serves the community. Now here's a big letter from the Marine Corps Institute for Corporal Ed Lowry. Ed's a member of the inactive volunteer reserve. He'd like to join the organized unit, but the outfit is full right now. Meanwhile, the Marine Corps is helping Ed to fulfill his ambition to head his accounting department. Those credits received through the Marine Corps Institute will help him get that job. One of the most pleasant stops on our mailman's route is Rockford College, foremost among the oldest liberal arts colleges for women in the United States. Many graduates from this lovely old campus filled the ranks of the Marine Corps Women's Reserve during World War II. The regular women Marines of today and their reserve components offer varied opportunities to the graduates of tomorrow. Next stop on our mailman's route is the mayor's office. There's always a lot of mail for his honor, our mayor. Let's pause a moment and investigate. Seems to be a meeting in progress. Shall we go in? Oh yes, this is the meeting of the town youth committee. That's Mayor Bloom, and beside him, Reverend Benson and at the other side of the table, the manager of the Boys Club and Captain Milligan, commanding officer of the organized Marine Corps Reserve Unit in town. His Marines have volunteered their services to this youth project, a program designed to provide our children with organized sports and wholesome recreation. Businessmen and civic leaders devoting their time to develop this program, and the Marines are doing their share to make it a success. The program is underway, and the Marines are already on the job, lending a helping hand whenever it is needed. There's Sergeant Abernathy refereeing a game for 10 fellows who might otherwise be roaming the streets, dodging cars, and finding trouble. Toys for Tots. This was first started by a Marine Corps Reserve Unit in California, and reserve units all over have picked it up. Today, it's become a nationally known program. These Marines devote their time collecting and repairing these toys, barrels of toys for the less fortunate orphans of our town. You'll discover the other side of the Marine Reserves most any Saturday afternoon down on the Ball Diamond. Our Marines are in the Industrial League and a mighty tough team to beat. A part of a well-planned recreation program arranged to increase the physical fitness of Company C. Sports sharpen timing, build muscles, inspire teamwork and clean, healthy sportsmanship. Firing at the nearby rifle range is sport also. And these men are good. 
Whether serving the community or firing the range, the reserves make a good job of it. And that goes for having fun together, too. It's the night before the outfit leaves for summer camp, their annual farewell dance. Everyone here feels that he belongs and that his friends are the finest fellows in town. But there comes a time when it's every man for himself. These Marines are proud to belong to their outfit, and Company C is equally as proud of them. Grocer, baker, or the lockmaker, regardless of their trades, skills, tonight, they're all Marines. Last night, it was the dance floor. This morning, it's all aboard for Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Summer camp, the highlight of the reserve year. It means two full weeks of fun and good fellowship, 14 days of travel and training. No wonder every man in the reserve looks forward to it with keen anticipation. From a hundred different cities, from villages and farms, trains, planes, and ships, all converging on Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Marines from Rockford, Roanoke, Rochester, from St. Louis, Shreveport, and Springfield, all speeding towards the Carolina beaches. These are the living parts of a great defensive pattern, assembling overnight into a cohesive, dynamic whole. Summer camp means speed and coordination. It means putting the basic principles learned in Black Hawk Park into practice. It means keeping contact with the company from Toledo on the right and with the company from Rochester on the left. Summer camp means Rockford taking its place in the big picture. Of course, the big moment is the amphibious exercise. After a year of classroom instruction in the techniques of landing operations, they are eager to make this run from ship to shore. No. That craft isn't full of mechanics, clerks, or farmers. It's loaded with leathernecks, men who know their business. They're a long way from the corn belt, but they're feeling right at home. Summer camp has a thousand memories to take back home. Dick Nelson, I guess, will remember the chow, as well as the rest of Company C. Man-sized meals for well, man-sized men. And after a day's exercise, there's nothing like a cooling dip in the ocean or relaxing on the warm Onslow beaches. After a swim, Leland takes time out to send a having a wonderful time, wish you were here to his 16-year-old brother. Too young for this year's trip, but a candidate for next year. Then off to a first-run movie feature at the Camp Theater with buddies George Negus and George Holloway. Time out before they prepare for the big day that tomorrow brings. Final review and inspection. The last day at camp. Each proud. Proud with a quiet dignity that befits his uniform. Corporal Wingett stands shoulder to shoulder with the best our town has produced. Each knows that he belongs to a truly great outfit. These are the pride of Main Street, of Rockford, or Rochester, or San Francisco, or Salt Lake City. Each man a living symbol of a great tradition of service. Yes, it's not what our town makes. It's those things that make our town, like Company C of the United States Marine Corps Reserve. The seeds of democracy planted here over a century ago have fared well, and its people, grateful for what they possess, eager to defend and improve it, who make a strong community. From its rippling, powerful waters to Black Hawk, ever watchful from his high vantage point above the city, we're proud of our industry, our people, 
our churches, and our parks. It's these things that make our town a place worth living in.